Welcome to the Beyond the Bucket Show, a podcast centered around optimizing all lives' buckets. We all have buckets we are balancing, coaching, entrepreneurial ventures, family, passion projects, and health. Let's all take this journey together and become bucket fillers. And here's your host, Chris McSwain. Welcome back to another show. we got a great guest today, Coach Joe Participich. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate uh, you having me. This is this is great. It's my first uh, podcast. I'm happy to have you here. Um, and for those that don't know, Coach is a longtime head coach at Pioneer High School. Uh, I used to coach against him when I was at Lee on the boys' side and d- does a fantastic job. So we're really happy to have you and get your insights. But before we start, why don't you give everybody a uh, – Fun fact about yourself. Fun fact. Uh, fun fact. I'm a big, big Marvel comic fan. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. When yeah. did you get uh, interested in that sort of thing? Um, growing up, I'm the youngest of five, and my I have two older brothers, and um, and pretty my oldest brother's eight years apart, and uh-huh. my other one's five, and and um, they just love comics, and especially uh, Spider Man, and collecting comic books, and um, he was crazy about it, and I just uh grew up being crazy about it too and and nice. still what 52 years old and i'm still crazy about it were so. you a um were, are you an old school oh yeah marvel silver guy? Age, yeah, old school. okay silver so you, age. Don't, so you don't really care for the new marvel um i mean if the if, if they come out in, in films but um i don't because uh, i do collect uh, still a little bit comic books it's uh i don't collect the new ones Okay. Yeah, just uh, the vintage one. The uh, new Spider-Man was very Miles very, Morales. Yeah, yeah. No, that, I mean, the the two animated, they they killed it. It was great. Yeah. Um, and actually, I, I show the first one. I teach film studies. Oh, okay. Um, and I show that uh, first one. Awesome. Uh, first, yeah. First uh, animated uh, Oscar for well, best picture. I, I like it because uh, Miles kind of looks like my son. <laughs> So I was gonna say you, you know, no, not me, but uh, <laughs> definitely my son. Yeah. So the I think the um, overarching effect of just having diversity included in some of these comics have been really good. I think Black Panther was awesome. Absolutely, um, and just you know, just it just is more equitable as far as that goes. And then people like myself or my son would be more interested in that because the guy looks like us yeah. and the dad looks like me and things like that. So I think yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, no, Stanley, who's pretty much the founder of Marvel, he was um, kind of the out of you know the realm in the 70s and, and bringing black panther in and yeah. you, didn't, you didn't see that uh um, very often in the, in those times and um yeah stanley was it's was great so who are your top three characters uh marvel characters marvel who, who, yeah um not a big dc guy but uh marvel spider-man obviously number one and yeah. i would probably say the incredible hulk number two um gosh number three is could be wolverine it could be daredevil um, right there. And did Disney purchase all of them? Yeah. Uh, so they have DC now, so it's all together. No, DC's not there. It's DC's, um, I think, under the HBO umbrella. Oh, that's so right. Warner Brothers, I believe. Okay. Uh, but Marvel's all under Disney. So because can... all the DC characters were in that new movie uh, with LeBron and the new Space Jam. Oh yeah. yeah. So they had all the uh, they had Batman and Robin yeah. and, and all these people. They even had like the um, the clown in one of those scenes i don't yeah. know if you, uh, your kids are older right yeah. so um you might not have seen it but yeah space jam and, yeah uh, oh well Spider-Man. the original space well yeah <laughs> that's different for sure um why don't you give a three minute backstory on you you've been sure. coaching for a long time and a, a, and a mentor to so many people and um yeah just give a three minute yeah. backstory for context yeah uh, three minutes i try to fit it in but yeah. uh, born and raised here uh lived in uh, west san jose um grew up um sports family and um, started playing basketball and kind of really took off in high school at Prospect High School. Um, we were really good. Um, my senior year, we were 24-0 until we lost our first game in, in uh, semifinal CCS, and that's wow. still, still a sore subject. And then, <laughs> um, so I played, and then I went and uh, um, really expanded my horizons and really learned the game of basketball playing under Coach Burton at West Valley. Yeah. Um, and it was um, the joke because I was off and on. I redshirted. I played and then uh, I sat out, I got injured and I, I figured I was going to stop playing and went to San Jose State and then Coach Burton asked, you know, I had a year of eligibility left. Um, 
called me back. So I went back and played, and that's when I played for uh, with Brad Quinnette and Danny Ishikawa. Yeah. So I was a little older than them. Um, and then decided whether I was going to keep on playing after, and Coach Burton asked me if I was interested in uh, coaching, and, and uh, there was an opportunity being the Frostoff head coach at Las Gatas High School in, in 93. Wow. And um, got the job. And was there for four years, uh, Jim Marino, um, long time. Yeah, coach. good old Jim. Yeah, long time his, mentor there. Um, his, son, have, his son's still the AD at Lee. Yes, Drew. Drew. And uh, yeah, Drew was a little tykster then. Uh, I think he was like five. Um, but uh, I always kid Jim. I think those were his best four years uh, at, at the varsity level when for I was sure. when I was there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had a great run, and I learned a lot. Um, and then that kind of led into uh, interviewing for the Pioneer Varsity job in 97 and uh, got it and, and started teaching there and two. Um, and now it's 27 years later. That's crazy. So you were there, obviously there then when we were at Del Mar when yes. we had those good teams and yep, Brad absolutely. came in and mm -hmm. um, then my buddies transferred over from Mitty, Ryan the guy, absolutely. Steve White. Uh, Watch what you a, guys play. We, what a, I mean, we had a, such a great team. I was telling, I forgot who, what podcast it was on, but you know, I go from starting, um, and Brad comes in, and then we get two of my two of my middle school buddies that come over, and so I'm no longer starting. But we had we had our starting five, but we also had a starting five that came off yeah. the bench. And so, you know, when we when we made it to the CCS championship our junior year, uh, and we were bringing everybody back our senior year, we thought it was just going to be a cakewalk and easy. But I think we only lost, we lost four games that year. But uh, yeah, what a great experience! Yeah. And um, you know, the, the legend of Bob Burton lives on because all the all his coaches directly came from there. So whether it be you know you, whether it be um, uh, whether it be Brad, yeah. whether it be there's a lot of us, Rich yeah, Young. Rich Young. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say, you and Rich kind of had a similar path. Yeah, he's a little bit older than me, but yeah, it's very similar path, and we're, we're um, really close friends. Yep. Um, but yeah, Coach Burton's tree, and you talk about the NFL trees and Bill Belichick. I don't know. Coach Burton has a pretty pretty long one, and For sure. and people don't even know the, you know, the coaches that are at the Division One level um, that are not even in this area. But, um, I mean, obviously Andy Newman, who – who played under him as the head coach at uh, North, Cal State Northridge, North yeah. yeah, and doing a great job. Um, and then obviously um, Danny Yoshikawa, who's who's uh, doing a phenomenal, uh, great coach at West Valley, and and I hopefully one day he's going to get an opportunity to to go back to Division One, but as a head coach. Well, they're undefeated now, which yes. is which is insane to be undefeated at this point in, point in time uh, with the level of talent that junior college hold uh, because like junior college now is is where a lot of high school kids have to go because they're not recruiting high school kids the way they used to unless you're a four or five star uh, if you're not you know top three four hundred you are not going to get a scholarship division one yeah. so you need to start looking at options for division two II, division three and aia which is all still good basketball if you can make it to the to those really I, I had an opportunity to watch division two basketball a lot last year um my daughter's uh, boyfriend, Quinn Danker. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so he was a star at Cal State San Marcos, and I was able to watch, gosh, a lot of games. And uh, I was really surprised um, and actually taken back how good it was. Yeah. Um, and it was, I mean, almost Division One good. I think it's just the only difference between Division Two and Division One is just the bigs. Uh, it's all guards, uh, but they're really good. Uh, right. And obviously he did a great job. And, and that, he's at Idaho now, right? Yeah, he's at University of Idaho yeah. uh, starting. And, and he got uh, he got Sports player. Center player. Yeah, uh, I was watching player, that live. Play of the day. Yeah. Oh, were you, were you there? I was watching it live oh, okay, on, on gotcha. stream on ESPN Plus. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was it was great. Great call by the coach. Good good draw up on, on the play. But uh, yeah, it was great. Something that uh, he's always going to have, which yeah. is pretty special. So 27 years. I know you took a small hiatus. A uh, uh, little bit. I was always in name as a coach. Yep. Uh, but uh, my assistant is a long time, Doug Nishijima. Um, yeah. And uh, um, kind of let him run the show. And I was just in the background, um, more of a director of operations. Sure. Um, but I never let go the the head coach. But um, Doug did pretty much all the work. Um, the and, first two years. And what was the reasoning uh, to, for taking a step back? Because I always think about as a coach, like this is year 11. I just finished year 11 yeah. at Valley and I've been coaching since basically 
oh four when I came back when I was still in college. I started helping out at Del Mar. Yeah. Um, and then when Coop got the job there, he hired me as a, the head JV back in 07 and then uh, stayed there for a couple of, Well, I was at Del Mar for like a total of seven seasons, went over to Monta Vista for one year. I interviewed for the varsity job, didn't get it. Um, and then I, I spent one year there coaching JV. And then Pat gave me a call and said, you know, come on over here yeah. um, because I had played AAU for Pat back in back when I was yeah. in high school. And uh, so, you know, I've been coaching for 20 years, um, not a head varsity coach that whole time, but like it's uh, since 04, no, no breaks. And so you start to look at, you know, your kids getting older. What was some of the things that was like, hey, I need to pause, but ultimately I want to get back to this at some point. Yeah, if you, if you do it right, it's so consuming. Yeah. Um, and you, it's, you need to have a lot of flexibility surrounding you, number one. Uh, your wife, yeah. um, if you're married, yeah. um, and, and your kids, and there's a lot of sacrifices that, um, need to be given. Um, and that, at that time I became athletic director, which is a whole nother deal. Um, right. and, and do uh, you guys have two, one for, no. Okay. I, so I, you're doing I do everything. both sport, yeah. both genders. So, um, and, you know, with, with Doug, I'm, you know, he, he's such a phenomenal coach and, and, um, I was comfortable doing that. They weren't going to drop at all and just give me a little breather of getting my, you know, feet underneath me doing the AD thing and make sure I'm doing that right too. Sure. Um, and, uh, that's how it kind of, um, you know, because it's, it's, it's tiring, but I did miss it. Um, and now I've, I, I've been back and, and still have passion about it. I always tell people I'll start stop coaching is when I uh, could sleep uh, eight hours after, after a tough <laughs> loss. <laughs> so. No, they, they don't get any easier. Too, no, now no that they I've don't. No, they been don't. doing it uh, for so long. They just don't get easier. No. Um, but like you said, if that goes away, then you know, it's probably time to step away. Yes. And that's, uh, yeah. that's very profound. Um, so what do you what what keeps you in the game locked in and and being being so present for your team and whatever their um, needs are that season cuz for those that are are not uh head coaches you know assistant coaches obviously know it too but there is just so if it was just basketball what we do would be very very easy but when you have to manage 12 different personalities Absolutely. on the JV varsity and if you got a freshman team. So, you know, right there, that's 36 kids. You've mm -hmm. got all their parents. So if they've got two sets, they've got grandparents, they've got friends, they've got all these other things that are going on. It's just so much. But what is what is the thing that keeps you coming back to this game? Um you know, I always tell it's the journey. It's definitely the journey and obviously building the relationships and, and the life lifelong relationships you build, um, yep. which uh, I love. Um, you know, I always say the, the worst part of coaching is act, the actual games. Um, <laughs> and and actually, Coach, I got that one from Coach Burton. Okay. I, I, I believe it uh, because uh, the journey and, and building the team together and, and, and getting them in their roles and having them accept them and, and that whole – dynamic um is really that that i really love um and um and make them feel that ownership of of being a part of team and and um so that's the, the journey is definitely what drives me and keeps me going for 31 years so far yeah and if you think about the game of basketball it has so many parallels to everyday life because let's just say let's just like you're going to purchase a new car. Well, you had the previous car probably for five years and it takes time to get to this point, get to this point. Finally, now you get an, you get this opportunity to go buy this car. And that's the same thing for the game. You practice so much more than your the actual games. You have two hour practices all week and you might have one game that literally lasts 32 actual game minutes. It yeah. might not ask. Sure. It's probably like an hour, hour 15 as far as actual time, but you have spent 10 hours preparing for this one game and only got 32 minutes of the actual, of the actual thing. And so that's one of the beauties of, that I think basketball can bring to people is it's not going to be given right away. And, um, you know, we, 
especially now have this microwave society mm-hmm. where we need to instantly have this now, this instant gratification. Well, what happened to when a freshman worked their way up from the freshman team to the varsity team um, for JV, then yeah. to varsity, and then they finally get their opportunity and they seize that moment. That's where all those unseen hours that everybody else didn't see end up paying off for that person in the long run. And then when they graduate, they can revisit some of those moments that happen and say, wow, I can actually get some through these difficult things because we all know, or both of us know, life is actually going to come. And because of these things that you've done in your past are actually going to help you right now in your future. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We, you know, we're not afraid to fail. My players know that. And we just uh, ready for the next play and, and um, learn from those failures and, and, uh, we fail all the time. It's about how, how you how you react to it, and and uh, so uh, yeah. Like I said, I, I you know I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. Yeah. Um, you know, probably have nine years left before I actually retire from from teaching. Right. But uh, I can still, still see myself coaching. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon either. I thought I would revisit things after year 15, but that's four years away. And, you know, I know a lot of the kids that are coming up. So, like, uh, I don't know if I want, really yeah. want to stop after that, too. But um, I think it's I think it's important to think about. But um you have kids of your own. So yeah. how, how was that push pull? And this is like yeah. a selfish question. You know, I asked Brad. Eric Ostrowski and Skip last uh, last winter break. I saw them out and we sat at sat at this yeah. bar for hours just talking about certain stuff like that because Brad's son's a senior mm-hmm. right now. He's I got yeah. he's got junior, offers. Actually. Oh, he's a junior. He's sorry. a junior. Um, but he has offers. He's got he's <laughs> yeah, got he's, Division One yeah, offers, just, and so does. I know the type of person that Brad is, and I want my kid if he wants it or she wants it you know, to do whatever it is they want, but you got to push a little bit Mm -hmm. because they're not just going to get there on their own. So I'm asking how much do you push pull? And then how much are you involved in everything else outside of the, you know, day-to-day duties that you have as a coach to your own team? Yeah. um, So multiple questions. Yeah, that's multiple. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Um, Well, one thing I think just going back before I answer that question is, is I surround good people around me. Mm -hmm. Really good. One that, people that challenge me to yeah. be a better coach and ones that I trust and that I can step away and go to a game. Um, you know, summer, we used to play 30 games in the, in the summer and I used to go to every one. Well, about, I don't know, year 15, that didn't, that stopped. Sure. And I let my assistants take over. Um, so to the answer, to, to make it work that long, um, you got to have really good people around you. Um, mm-hmm. um, and, and I do, and I did. Um, regarding my kids, um, I have two, my son, Jacob and, and, uh, my daughter, Jamie, and they started sports early, not just basketball, um, soccer. Um, my daughter was basically soccer, um, uh, basketball and my son was baseball, uh, basketball. And your son played for you, right? Yes, he did. Yeah. My two nephews played for me earlier. That's true um, too. My, my older, my older, uh, brother, uh, two kids, which was great. Um, and then my son played, he graduated in 2016. He was, he was good. He, uh, but you know, he barely played as a freshman Yeah, you know, was played, uh, on the frost off as a sophomore and then came up to me as a junior and came off the bench and was a backup point guard. And then he, uh, he was the starting point guard as senior and, uh, good player, not great, but good. And, and, um, but he had a gr- great high school career, but that was it for him, you know? Yeah. Um, but I didn't really have to lead him. He was, you know, Honestly, I probably thought he was a better baseball player, sure. but he was more passionate about um, about basketball. I, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I love baseball too. I'm. A, I mean, and, and we can talk about the 49ers another time because I'm, I'm really passionate. About <laughs> <laughs> uh, still, you, I still haven't recovered. You, but you and Coop both haven't recovered. No. We're in this <laughs> after a CCS championship game, and then yeah. Colin and a bunch of guys came over, and we're sitting right yeah. here. And uh, that still was brought up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah like Coop, you yeah, got to get over it. Yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, Coop. Yeah, well, I have uh, Coop's. Uh, you know, I coach against Coop, and, yeah. and obviously he's a phenomenal uh, player, but obviously doing great things as a coach for sure. Um, but uh, with the baseball, it was good because I remember Jake uh, uh, with played his freshman year of baseball, and then sophomore year after basketball. It's a diff- tough transition because I did the same thing. It was basketball, baseball is you know basketball so fast pace and and you're moving in practice and you go to baseball it's, it's a 
com- complete flip. Yep. And um, he wasn't really into it. He was going to make the team because he was good enough. But I said, you know, if you're not into it, you know, you're taking a place from somebody else that's probably going to get cut. Mm. Uh, I don't want you to do that. So wow. he, you decide and he decided, you know, you're right. I'm not playing. So that was kind of his end of his baseball career. Mm. And then it kind of just led and, and grew, grew as a basketball player. But uh, And when did you stop playing baseball? But, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to play baseball at West Valley under coach uh, Mike Perez. And, and I just decided uh, just to concentrate on basketball yeah, under, wow. and, and it's hard to do both. And, and we, even at the JC level, it becomes almost a full-time job. For sure. Um, if you want to be good. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, coach Burton was, you know, demanding, which uh, he should be. Um, so, I mean, summertime was just playing. And, yeah. Um, but then my daughter, um, played basketball and, and soccer growing up. And then unfortunately when she got to high school soccer, same and, season, same season. So yeah. she, uh, she had to decide um, and she decided um, she just had be- a better time uh, with the youth uh, uh, leagues with soccer and more of her friends. And, and uh, she flourished under soccer. She would have been, I thought a pretty good basketball player. She had some size. She's, you know, she's probably right now five ten. Yeah. Uh, fairly athletic. And, uh, yeah, and she could defend, but uh, she decided to play soccer and, and did a great job for four years. She actually got brought up as a freshman, and oh, wow. her her claim to fame that she played with uh, Naima Naima Gurma, who plays for the Olympic team. Oh wow! And That's the national awesome. team. She went to Pioneer and and uh, really, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. you look her up. Yeah, she actually was the um, soccer player of the year. Um, yeah. Well, you, I believe back then. When did she graduate? She uh, Naomi graduated in two thousand. Um, she was a freshman, 2018 or 17. You 17 guys had a really good soccer program then when yeah. she was there, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, and she actually played off and on. And she tried to play as, as much as she could, but she played uh, on the development, uh, Olympic development, or I should say national development team, oh, which cool. now she's a star on. So yeah. I, was, I was able to see her play uh, in the summer, and obviously they didn't do great in the – in the cup right. world cup, but, uh, she did. She was yeah, awesome. That's good. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, same thing for me back in high school. Uh, baseball was my best sport. I was really good at baseball and I probably should have stayed playing, yeah. but you can blame Pat judge for me. not. <laughs> yeah. It's... Because we had club basketball and we practiced over at, it was it's now Branham, but it was Valley Christian, Valley Christian at, the at the time, time. Yeah. when he was over yeah, there. You're old. Yeah. yeah. You're going back. That's so, it. um, yeah, so that's when I stopped playing baseball, and yeah. I and I, I don't I don't regret it. I think everything happens for a reason. I think things would be a lot different had I not uh, had I chosen to continue to play baseball um, because it's just more natural to me. I see it with my son too. He's he's playing with eight and nine year olds now, and he's only six, but he can yeah. he, he can hit off the fifty mile an hour um, pitching machine. Yeah, now. that's great. So, but he does. He just doesn't like it. Like he likes football and, and basketball. But to your point, you kind of let your kids do yeah. what they feel they need to do, and you kind of guide them. But you ultimately, it's going to be up to them to make the decision. Yeah, I just was fortunate that they wanted to play sports, and and they did uh, up to the point where you kind of all right, you know. So my son and I play pickleball now together. Oh, so, cool! Yeah, uh, HVAC over there. No, uh, actually, we have a. Uh, I live in Morgan Hill. We have a nice park right across the street that has a court. So, oh, cool. So we play it all the time and keep our competitive juices going. Yeah, yeah. Who, get, who gets the better? Oh, I, the... Yeah, he, he he might out of ten matches he might get me once. Oh, okay. So yeah, so you're he, he has good a, at yeah it. still moving around pretty good. I'm afraid to get into to to that sort of stuff because when I dive into something, I'm all in. Yeah. Like this podcast is coach. now. For, this is like four <laughs> years now in the making of the yeah. podcast, and then like I don't play golf anymore back when I was in sales I used to play golf a lot but it's like I'm just getting maniacal with certain things and then I have to continue to do it and uh, I just like it's, to stay busy yeah that, it's funny how coaching coaches personalities and and their behaviors and stuff kind of similar to yeah. that uh, because I am similar to that where you do something you're all in right. and, and you can't really do anything else yeah for sure <laughs> for sure uh what have what have been some of the low lights of your coaching career what have been some of the pain points or tough times uh, that's, that's that you kind of had to get through that's a unfortunate one yeah i've i've you know when you coach so long you you come across um you know gr- great players and and great kids and and unfortunately i've uh, i've lost a couple and um 
one um brian davis brian davis I played, yes i played against him he was because i played football too but yeah. um yeah. he and i were both like the top receivers in the league mm -hmm. back then and he was he was better than me but i remember that because a lot of my friends uh went to pioneer yeah um yeah that was a tragic accident um car accident but yeah he and actually brian only played for me uh one year his senior he didn't play oh, his really? junior but he was he was i wish i had him another but he, you guys were really good that year yeah 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 uh, and he was raw but he was a great athlete and and um but um uh, chris bush who um at that time was the only second freshman ever played on varsity for me that was in 2010 um and um he um played sophomore year played actually his last game was uh in the quarterfinals at midi against uh aaron gordon was it aaron gordon or drew gordon was that your, uh, what year was it that would be 2011 that's drew wasn't it drew yeah yeah i'm aging i'm <laughs> aging aaron a little bit um and then um between his uh his sophomore spring season he was a stud baseball player too he, he was he became ill and and then uh, unfortunately it was uh leukemia wow yeah and um unfortunately um he lost his battle um his junior in in uh, um, around october so yeah. that was the whole pioneer community was um and we still honor him um you know i have a coach's award uh, with his name um his parents we do a three on three tournament uh, in the springtime uh, our leadership group does that um so um and his numbers retired and the other one actually in that similar almost the same year he actually played with my nephew um sue grewal he uh his uh freshman year in college he um he got killed in a car accident yeah so th those two i mean those are the in uh, obviously brian and um uh, you know when you lose a life and at a young age and they had so much to offer um that still hurts, you know? Um, yeah. So how has that changed you? Um, obviously building such a cr great and close relationship with those guys and then not being here. How has that changed your coaching style and philosophy? Just, just you know, cherish the moments every day because you, you never, never know about what's going to happen. Um, I mean, and, and obviously I stay in close contact with both families, wow. um, which is great um and still honor both of them um but yeah I, there's probably not a time well i walk in the gym i see i see their names so and i walk in the gym every day so i think about them every day and yeah and it's something that uh it's always gonna be with me wow what a what a beautiful story thank yeah. you for sharing it and being vulnerable yeah. um my mom passed away uh july 29th this year and I was the only child. She brought me up. Um, and I was in Vegas at a basketball tournament. And I get the news in my hotel room um, by myself, uh, just, you know, resting before the next games that I was going to go check out. Yeah. And I'm on my phone with my wife because she's on the way out. But we can't get a hold of my mom because she's watching the kids for the weekend. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's all good. And she's on the plane. I said, just get on the plane. We'll figure it out. Um and yeah, uh, her mom goes over to my mom's house and um, I called the complex and and they couldn't, they didn't want to tell me right then, but yeah. they knew and I'm like losing it. Yeah. And um, my called my buddy who was at the tournament. I said, you just need to get here. He didn't say anything. I just sat in the hotel room yeah. uh, and I just, you know, let out all my emotions. Mm -hmm. Like most of us coaches, we just tried to get busy. So I just start like trying to pack stuff. So I didn't have to really comprehend what was actually going on. And I get all my bags were getting ready to head to the airport to, to meet my wife so we can come back. And I see uh, Casey Adams. He's a, he's a former coach. Um, and his son, JR, what passed away. Um, and I see, so my office is in the football office or at Valley. And yeah. I see his jersey every single day and it's my my high school number which is three and i see casey right there um and he says coach how are you i said uh you know not doing yeah. doing so well and i see casey and his wife and um i told him what happened and he just held me he said it's gonna be okay yeah. it's gonna be okay and I, I like i got chill bumps talking yeah. about it now 
because in that moment, that is exactly what I needed to hear because I knew what he had went through, the pain that he had losing a son and the, for the for the parents to be there and him to embrace me. And he wouldn't let me go because I just kind of wanted to push away. He wouldn't let me go. And uh, what a powerful moment. I'll never forget yeah. that because, yes, um, you know, I lost my mom, but he lost a son. Yeah. Like, I don't know, you yeah, know, yeah, that is, yeah. that is at, for the 41 years of, of my life that I've been, uh, yeah. been around, that was the hardest thing I ever had to deal with, but I couldn't imagine having to lose a kid. And so for the parents that uh, yeah, had to I, go through that, like, I don't, what do you even say? What you do you say even much. say? You no, can't, you don't say, you can't anything. say much. Just, and, just, just there for comfort and support, but, yeah. uh, um, I can't tell them, you know, I know how you feel because I don't, Yeah, you know, and uh, um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that uh, you just, you, you never want to have to go through, but uh, unfortunately I, I have, but, uh, you know, I always cherish those mem uh, memories that I have of, of those two For sure. um, and uh, something um, that uh, I always cherish. And I firmly believe that you go through certain things in your life for, for you to help other people with and get through it. So maybe somebody that's listening to this may have had the same circumstance and they're not understand, under, unsure how to, how to comprehend that or console the parents or console the team um, or just have those conversations. But that's why I like this, this platform for us as coaches to really open up about so many different things like we came to talk about basketball but yeah. the, the conversation is obviously steered in, in different directions about real life and that's what we do and yeah. this is this is the reason why i think we're so addicted to it and we love it and we cherish it because those moments are special you can't get those moments just anywhere if you're just a regular student and yeah. you don't have any extracurricular activities you don't know what that community and that bond feels like when you yeah. when you battle with with a group of of, yeah. of, of men or women and, and you guys, you know, yeah. have this one common goal that you yeah. try to achieve. There's something you can't, yeah, you can't uh, replicate, you know, in a classroom, um, yep. so to speak. Um, it's something that uh, you really get um, the kids to get out of their comfort zone and, and, and really learn how to compete and, and get them to an uncomfortable position where it's okay, just give it your all and get after it and, and, um, and be okay with the results, but know, know that you gave it your all. And, and that's, that's our goal at, yeah. at Pioneer and what I've been doing, uh, coaching. It's just, uh, it's just a, a collective group for the, for the same goal and, and, uh, get after it. Right. And I think, um, the one thing that I learned is just like the, some of the, some of the things that we care about, they really don't, they don't, they don't, they don't really matter at all in the grand scheme of things. And we have, I think we finished our season on the same night. Uh, and I was telling everybody to thank their parents. And that's when it hit me. It was like, Oh, my mom's not here yeah. to, to be there. And so I, you know, I broke down in front of the, in front of the group, but I think that was a positive thing because there was a young lady that we had brought up from the JV team. And she told me that her dad died a few years ago. Yeah. She's like, I didn't know that your mom, but I felt whatever it is that you felt. And like that to me is more than worth being open and vulnerable in those, in those moments, because that's a real moment. And that's what they're going to, to remember. Um, what are some of the positive moments that you can remember um, from your 27 years in coaching? Gosh, um, they're all, I mean, positives come, come across my plate you know, every day pretty much because, um, my, um, um, my web, so to speak of, of former players. I mean, um, they're out having, get married, having families, success in, uh, with their jobs, um, enjoying their jobs, which is important. Um, and, um, I mean, seeing them just flourish and, Hopefully, I uh, was a little piece of that uh, to get them there. Um, um, but stay in contact too. You know, when I just get out of blue, a text um, from a former player and, and say, hey, "Coach, just check and see how you're doing," and mm. we catch up. And um, and I'm not great at that. Mm. I don't. You know, they check up on me. I, yeah. You know, I don't. Uh, I'm not a big uh, communicator on that piece. But you know, they know where to find me. Right. Um, but. Uh, just seeing that, um, is, is really special, but, uh, um, 
just w- watching the kids grow um, and and really um, flourish in, in 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 playing basketball and and just not those that are, that play all the time because th- those kids on on the bench are uh, um, maybe not even in the rotation are are special too um, and you need those players and, 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 and speaking of that how do you incorporate those kids because like most of the kids are not high level players no. or starters or people that get the majority of the minutes. So what do you do to make sure that they understand that their role is I- I extremely important, just like the top players on the team? Yeah. Um, well, we're very transparent, you know, before, you know, we really move forward with the, with the team, we bring them all in and, and give them their strengths and weaknesses and try to give them a, a pretty good idea of what their role is going to be and, and, bottom line how much playing time they're going to get sure and um then then they can decide you know if if, if that's something they want to put the time in because I, my expectations is, is they just work just as hard as those that are getting heavy minutes right um and they have a decision and i tell them they have to go talk to the parents too because the parents, <laughs> the, the parents are, are part of the process on that yeah. and they, they need to buy in too because if you've done it long enough i'm sure you've come across where the surprise their kids not playing right first game or two they didn't come off the bench and they're going well why my my son or daughter's not playing well well, we've had that conversation already right (laughs) yeah we've uh so you know it it, it changes every year and and whatever your team needs that's what you have to try to provide but we just started having an open forum um we like two years ago we were very intentional hey we're all meeting to discuss everybody's role where they're at where we see them going things like that uh with the parents and this is what this is one of the first times that the parents can see first of all we talk about all the positive things oh we love we love coaching your kid you know she comes to work every single day and and works hard and and is a good teammate all those things and we we love coaching your daughter and parents that's the first time you hear because most of the time if they don't have that relationship or if they don't have that sit down all they see us is trying to hold them accountable for their play on the court but they have no clue what's behind that Mm -hmm. so that worked out really well and then this this past year we just sent an email hey uh during winter break because you get some games prior to winter break and so you can kind of see the lay of the land mm-hmm. when it comes to who's going to be in and who's not. Oh, by the way, when our league kicks in, uh, that's yeah. probably not even going to – we've been generous um, because now the bench is going to get even tighter because yeah. the competition level is is obnoxiously yeah. good. <laughs> yes. uh, but so yeah. that worked out really well for us. We opened up the time, and this year I think only one, one parent um, – wanted to have that time yeah. we, we chatted it out and you know no longer are the days where you can you can just be blind to the parents and they're just no. going to understand you have to really get out there in front of it um and i would rather be proactive just like when i go to i, I used to never go to the doctor i go yeah. to the doctor every single year get my blood work yeah. i do all that stuff it's proactive it's preventative mm-hmm. it's preventative so if there was something they catch it early now the the opportunity to make sure that you beat it is like yeah. way more way uh, the probability yeah. is way higher that's great and, to hear and yeah. that's the thing that i have found with the parents too and i don't uh, believe me but next year we could have a, a blow up and who knows but um i think if we just handle them with care uh, and we have this acronym in our program called CARE is consistency. So we want to be consistent, but we also need you to be consistent. You're a player. We need you to be here at a certain time, prepared and ready to go. We do the same thing. We're going to watch film. We're going to practice plan. We're going to put our team in the best position to be successful. This is that's consistency. Our attitude. Anytime we walk in a door, you walked in here, you had a great attitude. You had a smile. You're ready to go. You're excited. Same thing. Coach, how are you? Da, da, yeah. da. You know, and your attitude says a lot about you, no matter what the circumstance is um respect so we're going to respect the we're going to respect everybody around us we're going to respect each other's space we're going to respect each other's belongings respect the officials respect the facilities all that and then the last one is going to be e e and that's going to be energy and effort we we provide those two things we can control those two things in any aspect of our life we can control them on the court whether we're doing great whether we're not doing so good uh we can control all that so so those are all controllables that we've identified and we try to treat everybody with care and if we do that 
we'll have yeah. a have a you know a successful program regardless of the win loss record. Absolutely, that's a great foundation right there. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, effort and energy are, are the two that uh, really stand out. That uh, yeah, you, you you have control of that. Yeah, and, um, kids nowadays are learning a little bit. It takes them a little bit longer to, to get that, yeah. um, but um, but yeah, you're right with the parents. I mean, a little bit different back when I when I played. Even when you played, was um, some coaches never talked to parents. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, now me being an administrator, you, uh, you can't do that. Um, they're involved. They're their advocates, which they should be, uh, and you need to be able to communicate that. Yeah, well, and and. Like, why hide from it? You know, you're, if it's going to happen at yeah. some point. You'd rather not have it blow up later yeah. on. So the more communication, the better, you know, if there if there's a practice. First of all, we we film all the practices anyway. So that's great. I don't. Yeah, that's that's a great uh, tool uh, to have. Um, uh, film is great. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we don't do that. But uh, um but yeah, no, maybe great. you might know the athletic director that can make that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're still trying to get the Pixelot camera in Santa's Unified, so we might be the only district. In. Really? Yeah, we don't have it. Can so you guys just get a huddle camera? We do, but okay. you need somebody to film it though instead no, of Pixelot. The, the huddle camera. Oh, the huddle camera. Yeah, the, yeah. No, we can't do that either. Nothing. Yeah, it's uh, so I'm still tripod with the oh iPad. really yeah. no 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 oh, yeah, yeah yeah wow okay so that's yeah so we've had that for several years I know, now so. i know it's, it's a sore subject with me and and all the athletic directors in Santa unified but uh and so uh, what they is, know and if what, Santa unified listens to that they they know where i'm coming from anyway <laughs> uh a former isn't the for, farnum like the superintendent no no okay because no. he's a former basketball guy yeah no he's a yeah. was it wasn't he with Santa's unified at, Mm-mm. okay maybe uh, i was incorrect yeah. um he might be with another district but yeah uh, he used to coach at lincoln right back in the day yeah he was never been oh there. excuse me is, is it funk chris funk chris yeah. chris sorry. funk yeah sorry. yeah i coach against him um is he in he's actually the in uh dublin he's the superintendent over there oh okay he I was, knew, so he, I knew he was yeah he was assistant soup uh for a while um, so you would have had those huddle cameras a yeah, long we time ago yeah we were there uh, so the school, the, the, the district, won't it's, it's do a it? whole liability issue with them. Um, and I don't want to get into yeah, it. It's just, it's, 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 it's just, yeah, they don't want, you know, something happened and it's, it's live, you know, but Got it. I could look at a different approach, but sure. Whatever. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we just don't understand. Yeah. It's just, it's, a, <laughs> but it's, it's all good. You know, and we're in a society of everybody sues now. Right. Right. So they're, they're, um, fearful of that. Right. Well, so, if they're going to sue, they're going to sue anyway. Yeah, so. so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it definitely um, would help um, being able to have that. Just know that it's the game's getting filmed because filming um, games are so important. Right. Uh, the kids really. It's it's you know I'm sure you said it many times is when you talk during game time and you're you know at a timeout and you talk to a player about a situations that just happened and they go no i didn't do that i'm like yeah. well okay well we have the film film doesn't lie we'll, exactly. we'll talk about it we'll talk yeah. about it tomorrow right. <laughs> so um how much film do you watch throughout the sea like uh, on a game week how, how much um, are you watching? gosh that's what having good assistance for um we try to get probably three games on uh each opponent um especially league um for the first go around um preseason um, usually probably the first couple games, not too much. It's all about us, you know, and getting better and not worrying about the opponent. Uh, right. That's what, uh, we stress. Um, but then we get in tournament play, uh, in the preseason. That's when they'll start learning. We give scouting reports and kind of build up to expectations and, um, studying a scout. And then we go over the scout and watch film of the opponent, right. which, um, which we don't do until probably mid December. Yep. Um, just really concentrating on our, ourselves for the first month. You know, we would never do like scatter reports in the preseason unless it was like a ma- big tournament. But a few years ago, we lost we lost the game that we shouldn't shouldn't have lost, and it was because we didn't yeah. we didn't know the scout. Um, and so I, I vowed that that would never happen again. So we had 
you know, 26 games. We had 26 <laughs> scatter reports yeah. this year, but that was just because it got burned. You know, we got burned off to something that was controllable and you, you lose by a bucket or two. And it was like, well, we didn't know this player was going to get 35 points. And that was, um, and there was, it was the first game of the season. So we didn't, we didn't have any film on them. Yeah. And, uh, and so, but that's still not an excuse. Like, we needed to we needed to do that and so yeah yeah so now that's what we yeah. that's what we do we get if we have a game there's going to be a scout um and i've tried to i've tried to like well, i'm uh, sure you learned something from without having a scout the players did with knowing that you know uh need to know personnel and how to stop sure. them for and, sure and and probably woke up some people maybe they thought they were better than they were and so yep. you play somebody else they can score 35 on you if she, if she, <laughs> if she hits three threes in the first quarter we yeah. might we yeah, might want to exactly. guard it yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we, yeah. that's uh that's uh, yeah that's a, a different you know, we always can that's a whole nother segment but basketball iq Oof. um and uh um, but maybe yeah, the, maybe the trainer should start working on that yeah of basketball iq yeah and it's a lot because <laughs> Kids, they don't play as much. True. And when I say play, they don't play or watch um, college basketball, yeah. high school basketball, um, and, and go and go to the park and play. And open gyms, open used gyms to be, all the time. You used know, to they be, got, yeah. I mean, the open runs that. I mean, Brad would bring us to those open gyms right. at, at at West Valley. Yeah, great. Um, and we get we get our head beat in by mm -hmm. older guys, but mm -hmm. we didn't back down. We yeah. take it. We took to, we went to Campbell park. We went to Cherry park. Yeah. One day, this is a funny story, but, um, Kingsley, remember, mm -hmm. remember him? Yeah, he, he went to pioneer actually. Oh, did he? Yeah. For, I don't know if you, for four years, I know he, he was there one year cause I had alumni game one game, one mm -hmm. year, but I think it was my second year at pioneer in 90, 98. He showed up, so that's well, how I knew. <laughs> and he, so, for those that don't know, he's like a street ball legend yes. in in the area. And if he was on the court, he would. I mean, he would on the court all yeah, day. Yeah. So there was a dispute at the at Cherry Park, and this is before Quinnette had got there. Um, so it was just me, Ryan, the God, my buddy. Um, and so we pull up to the park, uh, and there was a dispute, and that dispute turned into a bottle being shattered on. <laughs> on the court yeah. so now nobody can play right. uh and then uh that the person who threw the bottle said he was gonna go to the car and be right back yeah. so um that was when everybody scattered and got yeah. out of there but yeah, yeah it was um yeah that's uh, were, that's the, not good those were, those yeah. were the days <laughs> yeah yeah no kingsley like you said i actually played uh, against them and hoop it up a long time ago back yeah. when they had it in downtown san jose yeah those, yeah. Were, those were great times uh, sure, well I'm sure well, Cornette used to play in all those. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was either bucket or foul most of the time. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I want to say something <laughs> on the film. I started trying to trying to do two things at once. So like if I come in here and I work out in the morning, I'll put the film on and I'll just watch it while I work out. Or if I'm on the treadmill or Peloton. Uh, I'll watch the film uh, while I work out. So now, instead of spending an hour working out, hour yeah. doing film, now I'm, now I'm doing both of them. Then I'll have like my notepad too. But it's just more patterns because yeah. all basketball is is patterns. Just like when you're driving down the street, you know, you see this car, you kind of know what this car is going to do. And same same thing in basketball. If you see this setup, whether it be uh, odd front zone, even front yeah. zone, uh, man to man, pack line, pressure, yeah. press, no press, like it's all patterned and you've yeah. seen the same play over yeah. and over. That's why you're able to dissect it and tell your kids flare, 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 yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. For us, it's, it's, um, cause not a lot, not a lot of teams run a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, uh, whether it's five out dribble drive, what, what have you, but it's for, for us, it's really know the personnel right? and, and make sure that uh, their top players don't be a, you let somebody else be a, um, but uh, yeah, we don't really have to work too much on their offensive sets. I mean, obviously it's great to know what you're going to see defensively, um, whether it's a press or, you know, a gimmick defense. Um, it, that's great to, great to know, but for us, we really stress on the personnel right. piece. Um, and obviously, you know, their out-of-bounds plays are always key because that could really decide a game if, if they have a, a couple of good ones. Um, right. But, uh, yeah, personnel. Because when our scattering reports all, I mean, a lot of personnel, but when you get to offense and defense, especially offense, it's not a lot. 
Now, if you scout us, it's going to be a little bit more because because we we like quick hitters and we like to do that stuff. Right. So, do you change your quick hitters for your personnel, um, or uh, do you more have a system? And this is kind of the system that we want to play in, and you guys have to kind of fit in. Yeah. Um, there's a couple things that pretty much are non-negotiable, and and um, the North Carolina break. Um, I've always run, and obviously I learned that from Coach Burton. Right. I think it's great. I think you got so four spots with the with the one. You got you, well. You got the one. You got two sprinters or two wings, and yep. then you have the uh, the rim runner and the trail. Yeah. Um, so um, so we we do that. You guys still not, run, run all that box stuff too. You know, what, uh, hybrid of it. Um, I mean, we, I actually brought box back this year, but um, we run. A, uh, I'm famous of the back door I love and I call it fist, but uh, yeah. I run it every year and the uh, blind pig actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's actually two dribbles pivot reverse pivot. And we have a back door uh, mm. on that side, but um, yeah, the box is still um, still there for quick hitters. Um, and you know, and w- you know, horn set is always is a popular one that you can do so much off. Um, but yeah, I really, you know, in zone play, obviously, um, instead of just you know high low or or, or what have you, we, we like to have some motion in, in, in zone and, and and build from there quick hitters into that, um, uh, especially at the high school level. You right. know, um, you know, give them some autonomy, but you know, help them get to that uh, yeah get to that point where where you can you can score and, and get the people with the ball that need to have the ball in their hands. Um, sure. With that, so yeah, we really believe in quick hitters and. And then that feeds into our motion, whether it's man or zone. Right. And at the end of the day, all you're trying to do is create an advantage. That's all basketball is. Can I get a slight advantage? Can I keep that advantage? And can I finish the advantage? Yeah. If you can do those three things, then you're going to be – and that and that, and that that happens for offense and defense. So I'm trying to keep our advantage on defense or create an advantage for us by – pressuring or double teaming or different zones yeah. or different man looks deny on the line up to line or in the pack yeah. line that could be an advantage for a team that is a, dr- a strong dribble drive team where you're already in the gap so it's yeah. like i'm not going to help because i'm already in help yeah and i got my top hand uh, top foot here so if you want to come come i'm gonna take yeah. a charge if not you have to kick this ball out mm-hmm. and we play it inside out so that's why i love the game of basketball because there are so many different ways to do it no no what no way is the correct way yeah. but Absolutely. they can they can all work or they can all not work mm-hmm. and it depends on the personnel that you have too can yeah. your personnel execute what you need them to execute when it needs to be executed yeah, yeah. i mean i our big uh, staple on the defense band because over the summer i knew that uh we probably weren't going to play uh, man to man very, very much because yep. we weren't, we were just as a collective group, we weren't going to be very successful and, and good at it. Um, so I, I put in a one, three, one, um, and you know, uh, Rich Young's pretty good at it. And he used to, we used to have some battles when he was coaching at Oak Grove. Um, and, uh, I really liked it. So he, he, came, he's come to, uh, about 10 years ago, I had him come to a couple of practices and install it. And then I had him come this year to do it. Nice. And, and uh, it was great. It was, uh, um, really got to help us get to where we were, we're league champs and, and, uh, and, um, actually had a great game at Monterey in yeah. the quarterfinals. Um, and that one, three, one, um, half court trap really, really helped us. And, and like I said, put, our players in a position to be successful, you know, were you uh, trap gap in the top or trap? We, we trap the top. The top. Okay. Yeah. We, well, we would, that would be our aggressive X and then um, our standard would be just trapping corners. Yeah. So you would gap, so you would yeah. gap and trap or just trap and trap. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. And did, was that your, and that was our you, main, main one. And yeah. what'd you do a baseline out of bounds? Uh, two, three. And then, so if they try to split the top or screen the top, what would you, what would you guys, what would, what would you guys do to counteract that? Like if, if they're running, like what I say, the junior high play where everybody runs it, nobody can stop it. The, yeah. uh, well, we would try to extend out on that, on that bottom guy and, and, and shift over. Um, but I always try to be the aggressor. So usually in our 23, we'll just trap the first pass. Got it. Um, and, and that's what we like to do. Yeah. Um, and so they, they can't run their stuff. Right. Um, so, um, and then if not, we would just go our, our two, three. And then once the ball, uh, 
rotated to the top, we'd, we'd fall into and it shipped over right into our 131. Got it. And baseline out of bounds, what would you do? On defense or offense? Defense. 23. Okay. Was that the question? No, well, I was saying, well, on the 131, if they tried to split the top. Oh, gotcha. Or, I or thought you were talking. the top of the zone. Um, oh, it, gotcha. How, you know what? Um, who did who tried to do that to us? Um, um uh, Westmont did okay. a little bit, but um, yeah, if they so our top guy, I mean, they really couldn't do that if we're trapping because we're so aggressive, right? Um, because as soon as they cross, you guys are coming, yeah, in. coming after, and fine if you want to bring a guy right next to the trap, so two guys are involved, and um, but if we were doing it on our base where we're just trapping corners, um we would have to hedge up and depending on how, who was low, then, then flash our, our bottom guy up, our and, middle guy up. And to, then would you drop your backside forward balls coming up on the left side of the floor? Yeah. Your backside forward is covering the block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we always start, start inside out. So we protect the basket and then look at how they're uh, attacking it and then anticipate and then kind of work our way up where we're more aggressive where we can, yeah. we can steal that wing to wing pass that, um, uh, that's the guy that's open, but hopefully um, our guy will eventually go up and, and be able to. And do you pitch your quickest, fastest player in the back so they can get yeah. sideline to sideline? Yeah, point Got guard. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we went we went almost exclusively zone this year just because we had a young team, three freshmen, six sophomores, one junior, one senior. So to incorporate the man that we've been kind of known for over the years just – wasn't going to be a reality so yeah. when you meet with the staff they're like what should we spend our time on well you should probably develop them you know just get a mentality and we'll pl probably go back to man next year but this year we had to go zone um because they just weren't they weren't going to be able to to execute it like you yeah. said you just kind of look at your team as like well yeah yeah especially what you want to do and i we we preach our, our defense creates our offense and um you know, if, if we can't be aggressive, whether, you know, for example, when we man, we like to, you know, um, whether we switch, switch the pressure always. Um, uh, if they're on ball screens, we'll double that. Um, but if you can't do that, you know, then, okay, well, then we're just going to, whether it's, you know, the pack line and, but you need to be strong, you need to be disciplined, you need to be tough uh, and, and be laterally quick. And, right. and be able to guard guys, just keep them in front of you because most guys, most people are just going to, you know, dribble, dribble, drive. And, yeah. and if we can't stop them, instead of them taking 20 footers or taking five footers and right. the percentage of the, the ball is going to go in the basket. We were talking with all the, those coaches that came over on, on um, Saturday and we were talking about just the high level of offense that people have. But like the lateral quickness, like you just mentioned, is – not keeping up with the level of talent that these players have. So I think that number one, I think people should play one-on-one -on -one a lot more because that yeah. is the complete exposure of your defense. Yeah. Either you can stay in front of somebody and just legal guarding position. Can I get my 10 toes in front? Can I get my shoulders in front? Yeah. If you can do that, then you are going to keep your advantage. The offense can't win unless they just make a tough shot. Right. But if you play defense like that, where you got 10 toes and shoulders in front. That's all you want at the end of the day. That's, that's as it. simple as as simple as we can say it yeah. as coaches. Um, <laughs> we started looking at lock left. I don't know if you've heard no. that term. Uh, there's this d defense. I'm always that, learning some. Um, so, yeah, tell Ty me about it. Tyler Colston, he, he used to be with PGC. He runs his own thing now. But it's a lock left defense. It's almost to the point where I don't remember back in the day when the uh, Warriors and everybody would play like James Harden almost behind yeah. him. So the concept would be your left hand is not going to be as strong as your right hand. I am locking you to the left. You cannot get back. We will deny any passes going to the offense's right, defense's left. So on this side of the floor, I am deny, deny, nobody's touching. I am basically pack line, yeah. elbow, and block on the strong side if they're going five out. Yeah. So we got the point is completely lock left. And then I'm standing in this gap right here. And then I'm, I'm blocks and elbows. If I'm on the defense's right side, offense's left side, they can make these passes. They cannot make these passes on the other side. Um, 
And then hmm. like if there is if there, if you get beat off the drive, <clears throat> what they call a peel switch. So I'm just gonna step up and take it. You take mine. So if you get beat off the ball, I'm stepping into this. Um, and then you switch. and then you go out there and you take mine, or like a a triple switch type of situation where you come downhill, I take this one. All right. This the uh, let's just say it's X four. You're gonna take mine, and then X one. You go and take mine. So we played with that a little bit. The peel switch I like because you can actually do that man or zone. So if you really want to run a shooter off, yeah. Basically, um, let's just say bottom of the zone X. Let's just say two three zone yeah. X three goes out to contest, leaves her feet, gets them off. So we run them off the line. Now X five comes over and basically takes that. Everybody else shifts and That's rotates. Good. So to take that away, um, you know, but with anything, you have to like really, really and we kind of like tiptoed with the, yeah. the lock left, but we started giving some straight line drives that I didn't yeah. really like, and they weren't really sure if they were going to peel or not. So it's interesting, but I think there's a lot of concepts that I like, some of them that I don't. This year, we just went exclusively yeah. to a matchup. Yeah, and, that, and that's, a t that's a tough one, yeah. you know, matchup zone. Um, and uh yeah, we did a lot of gimmick uh, stuff, and and in the second half of, of league, um, we incorporated um, trial and two and boxing one. Mm. Uh, just you know, you play the teams the first time, and and you know even more so from the from the scout because uh, you played them is, yeah. is who you need to take away, and and, and especially if, if if what you did and you turned out you didn't win the game or in or they beat you up pretty good. It's to change uh, to change it up, and and that's what we did. Um, For sure, and um, and that's a tough one, especially trying on two. They have two players, and on how uh, you know how to attack that. Yeah, um, and and not a lot of people do know. Yeah, at the at the high school level, to how to attack it. Right, but, and it's yeah. annoying for the the best player, the best two oh, players. Yeah, yeah. It's like coach, what do you want me to do? Yeah, like, it's <laughs> great because then they get frustrated and start standing around, and, and right. we've done our job, and like you know, we preach is you know whether we triangle or two or boxing one or just play straight up is to make other people be not, not the, not their best players. And, and if you can steal a half dozen possessions, like that's a win yeah. because a lot of these games come to a half dozen possessions. Yeah. Like if you just look back at it and that's one of the things that I've been talking about is like 12 points or less It's six, but you know, it's six possessions. If we're talking about twos, and if we're talking about threes, well, you know, it can be yeah, four right. possessions, right? So that is very, very critical. And just a, like I went deep dive because when I'm in here, I just put on some stuff in here and I'm just – and I, Yeah, and very and nice I, setup. Like, thank you. And I just get to – I get to work out until I watch these videos. But think of how many games were 12 points and under. And go back and look. And then if you just flipped 50% of those games – in your favor what is your record now like we looked at it last year and you go you get up to 20 wins when you flip half of those let's just say we had let's just say we had eight uh 12 point and under games yeah you know maybe we won uh four of them maybe we lost four of them well now if you win those other four how much your season is now changed with those four extra wins mm -hmm. and you know and, and negating those four extra losses or vice versa when you look at it the other way if you if you're winning, you know, seven one possession to six possession games and it goes the other way, like, well, now like our season is much different. Yeah. So we started to try to really win six possessions. How are we going to win these extra six possessions? Baseline out of bounds, side out of bounds now because on on fouls where the timeouts, yeah. free throws, how much more time do we spend shooting? actual free throws because when you get to that double bonus like you have to convert on those because i felt like this year i don't know about your league but we weren't in the bonus as much as we were in previous years no. when it was seven fouls like there were so many far i mean I'll, I'll i'll go back and look but i don't based on how many free throws we took last year compared to this year it's probably significant it may even be split in yeah half. i think that, i think that's what the nfhs wanted to do with yeah. with the new rules of of um uh, racing the fouls each each quarter um 
Yeah, I, I would probably. I didn't. I haven't looked, but uh, just educated guess that yeah, we we shot less free throws. Yeah, we weren't very good shooting. <laughs> by, the, by the way, <laughs> uh, not, um, and uh, yeah, and that's yeah, that's something that uh, um, it's hard. You you practice them, you practice them, but as a shooter, which I wasn't a very good one, but um, it's repetition and, and it's practice, and you're a good shooter. Um, and, um, but it, it's, you know, when season's over, it's from spring to it's consistency. Yeah, yeah. But it's the time it's, it's just not, Hey, I coach, I just, yeah, I did. I, sh- I shot the ball, you know, 20 times. I don't know. That's a 300 times, five days a week. Yep. Um, if you want to be good, um, and, um, you're not going to be a good shooter when I see you officially in November 1st to now it's, you know, it's from march to october that's how you become right individually skill set good because we, we don't have you know as a high school coach you, you don't have them like you have them in college um and you have them in a small window and yep. and most of that time is is team oriented stuff yeah to get them ready to, to compete as a team yeah i think back to the summers that i spent with ryan lagad who was a great shooter for us and like I said, he he came in and he was he was a better player than I was in high school. So like I, when he came in and I saw his work ethic because we played sixth through eighth grade together, and yeah. then when he went to mini, he still did the shooting. I wasn't as good as a shooter then, um, but I became a better shooter because we would just go to the door park right over there off mm-hmm. of off of Lee. Yeah, we would go there absolutely. all the time, and we would just shoot and i would see how good he was and i you know this if you're if, you, if somebody's a good shooter you don't have to chase down the ball no. <laughs> you, if you're a good shooter yeah the ball is coming right out of the net yeah. especially with nobody on you yeah. and so he would get so mad because my ball would be going everywhere <laughs> and then all of a sudden like i, I figured it out yeah. okay now this is what a real shooter and like if you can't make 70 percent yeah. With nobody on you, you're not a good sh- high yeah. school shooter. Yeah. And, you know, if you're in college, you should probably make 80% w- at five spots yeah. with nobody on you. And in the pros, they do make yeah. 90%. Well, we try to just get 70% from the foul line. Yeah. And that'd be it, nice. It, yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, and I think we were probably borderline 50%, which, which surprisingly, we still um, well, well, able we, to be successful because. Yeah. Um, you're giving a lot of points away and you usually you, you lose the close games when, when you can't hit free throws. Uh, fortunate for us, it really didn't bite us, but um, hopefully next year we will figure that out and, and they're working on it right now. For sure. Uh, and when I see them in, in October officially that they're ready to go. But. For sure. Uh, well, we've been doing this for an hour and six minutes. I can't yeah. believe it, but um, I, I love it. Um, and we'll get you out of here shortly, but a couple of things. One, what would you tell your, uh, what would you tell your 27 years ago self um, about this journey of coaching? If you can go back and, and tell yourself something. Wow. Um, I definitely didn't think that I would get this much um, enjoyment, mm. um, um, satisfaction um, from doing this. Um, Cause you don't really know what you're doing and who you're affecting and, and, mm. and, and all that. Um, I was just there um, coaching one cause I, I loved the game of basketball and, and I was passionate about it and I was somewhat of a good leader. Um, and I wanted to coach and, and stay, have that competitive juices cause my playing days were over. Right. But that led into a whole different ball game. Um, and um, that I didn't really think of. And that's just being, you know, lifelong relationships and and hopefully guided majority of of my student athletes in the right direction yeah i love i love that answer and um like you said the lifelong relationships i just think about all the pe- first of all we saw each other like five times in the last week yeah. at multiple different games yeah. at multiple different levels junior college high yeah. school whatever division yeah. uh, we were going to watch and that was a, that was 
the the good thing about being out of the playoffs, like I can now check out and go be a fan because for my first 10 years, well, I was locked in. Like I saw Colin this morning and, and um, you know, he's, he's pacing around there. Yeah. He's doing yeah. some last minute scouts and, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I feel like I feel free. Um, I'm, I was very, very upset that I wasn't able to continue, but I'm, I'm happy for him, but I, I don't envy him right now yeah. because you, you, we can kind of just be free and be, and go to games, but just think about how cool it is, Joe, to to go to a game and know so many people and be embraced by so many people that know you, um, know the time that you've put in, and you have the same respect for anybody else that has been in that same thing. I'm, I was texting Rich Young uh, at, at the Valley CCS Championship game. Yeah. I said, "What's the halftime adjustments, Coach?" Yeah, and he's like, "Well, get." Uh, get Martinez in. Yeah. I was like, well, he's not playing because he hurt his knee. Yeah. He's like, well, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. I, uh, I was at that game too. I saw you there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I was bummed not seeing him play when I, when I walked in because, um, yeah, he made a difference in the semifinals for sure. Um, and uh, I, I was at that game too against Wilcox. Yep. I was really, that's the first time I saw him play. I was really impressed. Yeah. He um, dominated but, for sure. Yeah. But I was impressed with, I, I knew Colin was going to do a great job when, the, when he got hired. Uh, another, another former West Valley yeah, coach. Yeah. That's, yeah. He has that <laughs> lineage of, of West Valley, but uh, just from afar. And obviously his, his resume of, of coaching uh, at the college level too. Um, and he's doing great things and yeah. I'm sure happy for him and happy for the Valley Christian Warriors. I think they found a good one. For sure. No, I, I, I love Colin. Um, you know, our kids are the same age and they play on this. Yeah. I saw to, them playing. Go to yeah, the same it's school. Pretty cool. Yeah. And they, uh, and they play on the same basketball team, same football team. And we're, we're getting, we're getting all the kids yeah. ready for like in, yeah. in 10 years when they get up yeah. there. Uh, like it's it should be it should be fun. Yeah. So that's that's fun. And our kids really love basketball. Yeah. They've been around it. I mean, my son was eight weeks old taking a is taking his CCS championship photo with us. He looks like yeah. a little football there. So yeah, well, that'll uh, be interesting when they start um, playing together and and where you have to make a decision because sometimes being a a coach, you're gonna uh, whether you you have a game and you, your son's playing a mm -hmm. game. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, that's well, going to well, be an interesting time for you. Well, that's when I'll just go and, uh, coach with Colin. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, uh, be, uh, yeah. That's when I'll do that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I got, we got some time. You got some until, time, but, like, uh, some but time it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun with yeah. those, those two little ones and, the, and is, is his kid a baseball guy too? People, yeah. So we we try to do everything Thing together. We try to do football, basketball, baseball. They're in Los Gatos. We're in the Willow Glen um, baseball league. And did you know Colin before this? Uh, look, not really. Yeah. I knew of him. Uh, yeah. Um, but during the, his interview process, we got kind of close. We we would we would talk every day because yeah. you know he had a really good situation down there yeah. at Windward, mm -hmm. and so like. When I'm at my PE class or, or after yeah. we would just talk. And he's like, "Tell me." He wanted to know like the real. What is it like? What is it like? Tell me why you know, um, some of the other coaches not yeah. been able to make it. And so we had some real conversations. And then when we finally met, it was just kind of like, and we yeah. knew a lot of the same people. Yeah, look at that. You yeah, know, and, to, being, and, being a coach now, you're building a lifelong relationship with with the guy that. Uh, pretty much has the same beliefs and passions that yep. you do. It's pretty cool. And uh, that's the thing too, where it's like, I'm going to ask somebody about him. Like I might ask you, Hey, what do you think about so-and-so? And nobody said anything bad. And yeah. the same thing that he, that he said, nobody said anything bad. And then when we talked, it was, it was very easy. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, uh, when I saw, heard his name uh, applying for it, I'm like, uh, this, this is going to be really good. For so sure, I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad uh, Valley made the right decision. He's good, and and we, um, I've learned a lot from him. I think he's learned a lot from me sure. too. Just on, uh, just just talking, and that's what that's what we we really love. I had yeah. I had Colin in here. I had, we Skip couldn't make it because yeah. uh, he had the kids, and then we had Coop. We had Bill yeah. Murray. Yeah, uh, Josh Lagod. 
um, he used to be the girls. Yeah, coach no, I know Josh. Yeah, and I know Josh. We yeah. just sat in. We just sat in. Yeah. Was, usually, if it's a little warmer, we got with the, Skip there too. You got a word in, huh? Skip, Skip. Well, Skip couldn't make it. Oh, Skip didn't make Skip it. Okay, that probably it. was a good thing, but, right? Yeah, Skip. We got to get <laughs> Skip. I tell, Skip and I go back a long way. Skip's a good. Yeah. He was our. He was. Brad, he was Brad's assistant with Duncan. Yes. Oh, with James Duncan. Did you know he coached a year at Midi? Did you know that? Skip did. Yeah. I think he did. He go to Midi. No. He went to Milpitas. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. No. But he was at Milpitas. He was, I, a, I he was a head varsity coach uh, at Midi one year. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I knew he had some sort of tie to Midi, but I didn't know yeah. it was that. He was he was an assistant uh, under Mike Willard. Um, this is an agent. Uh -huh. I don't even know. Eh, you might have been at Delmar. What year did you graduate at Delmar? Oh, one. Yeah, it was before you. Yeah. Um, and um, Mike left and, and Skip took over. Um, so at a very young age, but, uh, yeah, skips one of the, one of the better coaches he's around. Good. Yeah. He's good. He, you had to see him twice or no, he was no, th yeah, no, I, I don't like playing coaching against him. <laughs> uh, one we're friends, uh, really good friends. So one of us have to lose, but you know, obviously the style of play, when he has that personnel with that aggressive, uh, man to man, um, yep. defense and, uh, and playing at independence, not easy either with that, yeah. with that big, uh, Big jam and you know your players. It's a little bit different shooting for sure. In, in that, with it. what uh, this is what I wanted to ask you yeah. before I get out on the last sure. question. But um, who are some of the underrated coaches out there that might not get the? I, I asked a lot of the public school coaches this this a lot because you know there's different there's different sandboxes and yeah. um, you know our sandbox is much different than yours. You know, it just is. We have just talk about the the huddle camera. We yeah. film every one of our practices, and we can go back and cut stuff up. Uh, and that's just one of the small th hurdles that you guys have to get over as high school coaches. So, I have a lot of respect because I came from the public school and coached in the public school a long time, and so you know the difference between what what we have now in, in our league versus a public yeah. school. And I think you guys don't get enough credit. That's why I like this podcast yeah. because somebody's going to listen to this. I'm like, dang, this dude is legit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that'd be nice. Uh, I think, you know, actually they're older coaches, but um, I, I just uh, so much respect for, for both these and, and they come and they've been coaching for, for a long time, but um, Craig Ellen, good. Mm. Uh, I think, you know, being in the public uh, uh, schools, um, you know, you get, you coach who you get and, but I, he's, man, he, his, his offense and Princeton and Princeton and Flair yeah, is, but yeah, and, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to play him, but he gets the most out of, out of the players. And um, there, you know, we, we've, we've had an ongoing scrimmage for, uh, for the last, I don't know, 20, 25 years. Um, I, I, yeah, I've, much much respect for him and what he does and then um a gentleman that just came back coaching uh, uh, on the boys mike davy mm. over uh, he's at saratoga saratoga okay. uh, dick davy's son yep never and i when i when i'm saying because these guys i don't like to, to coach against uh because uh, what they bring to the table and you know they're going to be prepared and, and they're going to uh, attack you in, in ways that uh, um, are going to give you fits um so those are two that come to my mind um i'm gonna give an assistant coach credit steve c and dell oh well that's yeah and he is so good yeah and well we've had some good battles so so because steve was the head coach at leland yep um yeah i mean if he was at the head coach he would have been on the top of the list now steve and i learned a lot from steve um and obviously knew him when he was assistant at uh, under dick at, at, Sarato at uh, santa clara university right. but yep. uh he does a great job and um yeah i mean i text him after they they won the ccs championship you know and, and congratulate him and and nick i think nick does He's i think nick does a great job he does. had a younger coach and you know nick uh, went to will glenn and played and and i coached against them and, and watched him grow um and um, i was sad that uh, he stepped away uh, initially but uh, i get it you know work and kids and starting a family but um he didn't stay away for too long and he's back and talk I, about care. He puts a lot of does. care into he that does. program. He does. So I, uh, as, as a younger coach, um, he does a phenomenal job, um, uh, getting those kids ready to, to play and compete. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of him. Um, yeah, that's, I'm sure I'm missing some people. And if you, um, 
And I see I see Nick every Sunday yeah. at football because yeah. our kids are the same. Good. Yeah. <laughs> the same uh, you know, and I see him Saturdays at yeah. basketball. So that's 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 going to be the fun part too, because you're going to know all these guys yeah. and their kids, and mm-hmm. they're coming up at the same time. So that's that's the cool part about this whole community. Like, what you, I just get so much enjoyment from that community factor, and we're all in the same thing, even though we're at different schools and the colors of our uniforms and on our mascots are different, yeah. but we're all the same, and that's what I love. Yeah, yeah, no. Um... I'll probably think about it in a couple yep, other coaches, yeah. but, uh, um, yeah, those two and, and, uh, um, with Nick, uh, I mean, I've been coaching for so long that I don't, I don't have a CCS championship, so, um, I'm jealous. I but, think he's uh, he just got two. This he's is got second. two. Yeah. He's got two. Yeah. Uh, I've got two. Yeah. So I used to, yeah. hold, I used to hold that over Coop's head for a while, but now yeah. he's got one. Yeah. Um, but well, there's... speaking of, yeah, I mean, obviously Coop, you know, is, is, done it all at all different levels. Um, and, um, I'm glad he, he found his way back and, yeah. and, uh, Menlo's really, really lucky to, to find him and find him late and look what he, look what he did. So, um, talking about, uh, I mean, I coached against me when he was at, well, he was at Del Mar and then, yeah. then Brad grabbed him over to, 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 to Piedmont Hills. <laughs> that might be Could, why they transfer. Yeah. That, they can't do that anymore. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, talking about having battles he he remembers them because that's uh, probably when i coached the best player i've ever had at pioneer and salon elgin taylor oh that's right oh because they did you guys yeah you guys did battle yeah we battled um so um yeah so it was it's he's he's doing a a great job and talking about somebody that's passionate you know yeah (laughs) we so we scrimmage that saturday before and I'm thinking this is a cat. This is my dog. This yeah. is like, all right, we're about to you yeah. know, dap up. We and yeah. we did that, and then, you know, we put some time on the clock, and we had a couple of officials yeah. at the game: his wife and uh, Julia Hollander. Yeah, and he's on ten. He's got a, he's got a full, <laughs> full scout yeah. uh, for us. And I'm like, we're just trying to work on some stuff to get yeah. ready so we're not rusty. And uh, he was on ten, and it was it was it was fun. Maybe coach, I, because Steve Young was there. Was he in? in- uh, no, he wasn't there that day. Yeah, um, <laughs> they took the bus down. Yeah, and, and they came over, but no. It was, uh, <laughs> so we we got to it, and I was like, okay, well, I got to snap into it because yeah. I just thought it was about to be casual, but uh, forget nothing's casual of my no. my dog Coop. No, he's not. Um, he, he's. He's hundred percent, but that's what makes him so good. So I don't know if you know all the guests that have been on here, but I always ask this question at the very end, who should be a guest on the show? And you have to make sure that you connect us. Um, if I don't know them and make sure that they come on. Hmm. You, you haven't had skip. I haven't had skip, but I sent him a text Yeah, and I asked him. So. Yeah. Um, Gosh, there's, I'm, I'm trying to think uh, a little bit higher. Um, Danny Yoshikawa? So I asked Colin, once the season's over, I need Yosh to okay. come, come here and sit down. All right. So I want those two for sure. Yeah. So maybe you could just you know, put yeah. a word out to them. Um, I'm trying to um, think. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Yosh um, – and if we get the tech right, we, you know, we want to do like a round table where yeah. we have multiple coaches and we can all kind of just, you know, another off. guy that I mean, he stopped coaching, but uh, have you ever crossed paths with Stu Walters? Stu? No. No. Long time head coach at Soquel high school. Okay. Um, his son, Max is uh, the youngest is um, playing at Chico state. Oh, cool. Um, and um, actually Sam, his oldest is, is uh, Danny's assistant at, at West oh, Valley. Really? Okay. So, um, He's really good. He has, uh, I mean, if you wanted to talk about the the history of uh, basketball over over the hill in Santa Cruz, he's yeah, he's we he's had won. a lot of good players come out of there. Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah, and I got uh, Rich is another one that I want to make sure that I get on to. Rich Young. Yep. Yeah, I I can do that. Let me. Rich Young is, uh, you know, um, one of my closest in the in the coaching fraternity yeah. we call it, um, which is. It's a, it's a it's a great group and it's a special group and we're all together in this in doing that and um, um, but yeah he is very knowledgeable um, and that's somebody that I know he's itching to get back um, right. coaching but you know obviously having two uh, girls they and both young play, kids do both of them play soccer 
They both play soccer. And so. his wife works at MIDI because I was like, if your girls play basketball, you got to send them his, over his, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I believe, yeah, his his wife was a stud athlete at MIDI. Yeah. Played field hockey at uh, at Stanford, yeah. um, Amy. and uh, But, uh, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised down the road you, you to uh, Rich um, – uh, you know, storm in the sidelines. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. Wow. So I'll try to get rich. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sounds so. good. I want to hold you to that. Thanks, and, Chris. Uh, hey, this is another great episode. Thank awesome. you, Joe, for stopping by. Appreciate and uh, you get to see this outro if I can find it right here. Thank you for listening to the Beyond the Buckets podcast. Please remember to subscribe, rate, and share the show with your friends. And until next time, take care.